time to ignite those dreams of our young people and empower the youth to bring their visions to life. Now we are partnering with the After School Graduate Development Center on the Ignite Enterprise Project to provide practical tools to teach young people how to build businesses and to create employment for others. In Lagos, the possibilities are endless. Lagos State, in partnership with AGDC, presents Ignite, powered by First Bank and supported by Bank of Industry. Welcome to Ignite TV, a 26-week journey into starting a business. My name is Ibuku Awoshika. From the age of 25, I have been an entrepreneur, and I'm here with 300 young people from Lagos State to share the benefit of my experience and the experiences of others. Through the next several weeks, I, along with other seasoned business owners and professionals, will discuss and explain different aspects of business, from developing a vision to developing a business plan, from managing staff to managing the almighty money. So get ready to ignite your passions. It's time to move from being a dreaming country to a realistic country. Have From the great city of Lagos, it's another inspiring episode of Ignite. Practical business advice taking you from dreams to reality. Ignite. From dreams to reality. Just to share a few notes of what some people have said about business. Mark McCormick, founder of International Management group says, being self-employed is the purest form of capitalism and is the best way of getting paid what you are truly worth. Nolan Bushnell, founder of Atari and Chuck E. Cheese's, says, the critical ingredient of getting yourself working and doing something is as simple as a lot of people have a lot of ideas, but only a few people get to put their ideas together and decide to do them now and not tomorrow. Not next week, but today. The true entrepreneur is a doer and not a dreamer. Now, six out of every 10 young graduates that are coming out of the university can hardly find work to do as at today. Part of the major problem that we have is we're not creating enough jobs because we're not creating enough businesses. And our educational program as of today is not structured to produce entrepreneurs, but is more structured towards producing graduates that go out to look for work. Yet, we have such a great body count. 170 million people, 65% of that population is within the working age that cannot find jobs right now. And in the past, because of our social and cultural issues, a lot of jobs that are created are also wiped out. We haven't been adding to jobs. We have been replacing jobs. Every time an entrepreneur sets up a big successful business over time, and by the time he's dying, he hasn't managed to structure the business in a way that is handed over to the next generation. The business dies, and all the jobs created through that business deleted. Which means that every time we're replacing, I'm sure if I ask all of you, there would be companies you can remember that were great companies in the past, set up by Nigerians, but that no longer exist. True or false? There are a lot of businesses that have been created by Nigerians there are many of those businesses that have not lasted to the next generation. Sadly, that's part of why we have a major job deficit. Because instead of adding to jobs, we have been deleting and replacing 
those jobs. Now, for us as a nation to solve our job situation, and we can't solve it by people shipping themselves across different parts of the world, because right now, every country in the world has a job problem. So we've got to look inwards, and we have to solve our own problem. And I'm saying, you guys are the next generation. This is about you and the people coming behind you. And it's important that we as a people and as a nation join hands together to educate our minds and see how we can begin to create the jobs that will not just be subsistence entrepreneurship. Do you know what subsistence entrepreneurship is? Entrepreneurship that you do just to eat, just for yourself, me, myself, and myself alone. That's okay, because maybe you get fed for a season. They're also the easiest businesses to die. We're talking about businesses that you can scale up. You can create the jobs for the two, for the five, for the 10, for the 20, and those are the kind of businesses that can also become multinationals if you can stand the test of time. Most of you are educated. You've been through the four walls of a university. Your mind is prepared and ready to take on challenges. Your certificate in itself is not your biggest asset. It is an eye-opener, and I need you to see it that way. Don't get caught up in the degree that you have, because your degree can facilitate, but it can also become a stumbling block. If your mind is blocked on, oh, I'm this, I'm that. The important thing is your mind has been taught to process information. Your eyes have been opened to look at situation in a certain way. And we've got a situation in the country right now. You have to look within what is around you and see how we solve this problem. This is the reason why Lagos State, First Bank of Nigeria, and Bank of Industry, working with After School Graduate Development Center, has decided to set up this project called Ignite. Let's set the country on fire in terms of entrepreneurship. Let every single person in the studio today and watching at home decide to use the best of themselves to set up something that will cause a change and create a job for somebody else. How do you start a business? Because these are the questions you've got to ask. Now, let me put a, a note of caution. Every person isn't called to be a business person. So you have to first understand yourself. You need to ask yourself some basic questions. The fact that there's a lot of noise and need for entrepreneurs to emerge is not the reason why you should go become a misfit in a place where you do not fit into. Because that will only lead to frustration wastage of resources, and at the end of the day, you will be disappointed and all the resources will be wasted. You first need to ask yourself, is this what I want to do? Is this something I have the natural skills and talent to do? Or why do I even want to be an entrepreneur in the first place? Why do you want to be an entrepreneur? Because you're tired of looking for work or because you think you like the face of Aliko Dangote, he's the richest man in Africa, and as an entrepreneur. So I want to be an Aliko, so I want to be an entrepreneur. Or because you just want to make a lot of money, or because you don't like anybody telling you what to do. Many, many reasons why you might ask yourself or tell yourself that you want to be an entrepreneur. Some will be valid, some will not be. What is most important is that you're true to yourself. And part of what we're going to be doing is asking ourselves questions that will help us to be able to answer rightly. Because don't forget that every business that the entrepreneur will create will require people to work there. So we can't all be entrepreneurs because there must be people to drive the businesses. I'm an entrepreneur. I employ almost 300 people. I'm here with you. Every moment I'm spending with you, my business isn't shut down because there are people there that are working. There are people that are adding more value in many ways to my business than I can because I have my strengths, I also have my weaknesses. Their strengths become major assets for my business in areas that I have weaknesses, apart from the fact that how much can you do as an individual? So you've got to understand that from the beginning. Some of you that are sitting here or some of you that are watching at home, at the end of the day, you might be a better fit for being an employee, and you should seek to find the right job 
for your skill set and for your passion and your interest. Do we understand each other? That's very important. I'm saying this because I don't want us to all get caught up in, oh, no, no, I don't want to work. I just want to be an entrepreneur. That's fine. If you have a natural calling and a natural interest and you have the passion and the drive to sustain it. So that's why we're going to talk about some of the things that you need to consider in wanting to start a business. Starting a business, it takes more than a bold decision. It's a bold decision to start a business, but it takes more than that. So you've got to remember that. I remember when I was going to start, it wasn't planned. And for some of you, it would be an accident of life. Some would de be deliberate. Some of you have been dreaming about business since you were in secondary school. Some of you have even been trying out one form of business or the other. You just need more information. You need to be more knowledgeable and you need better opportunities in order to scale up that which you're, you already know. Without much, more like nothing, I stepped out and attempted to make sense of what I thought I wanted to do. That's a 20-something-year-old story now because by the grace of God, I've been able to do something with it. And I'm grateful to God for that. So you will need to be bold and courageous. But being bold and courageous alone will not be enough. There are many things I wished I knew when I was starting. That's why I have the advantage of sharing with you now, because I don't want you to make some of the mistakes I made, because there wasn't an opportunity like this. It requires logical thinking to put a business plan together. What does the logical thinking and putting the business plan together, what does it do for you? It's because when you sit down, when you think that, oh, I want to do this. Immediately, your mind can run ahead of you with, oh, I can do this and I can do this. And you get all excited. It's called an entrepreneur's bug. And you think, ah, I can do this. And the next thing you think, ah, the only thing that can stop me from doing this is money, which is the average answer you get from every young person. Oh, I'm, I have ideas. I know what to do. I just don't have the money. Fa, fa, fa. Fa, 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 what? It's not all about money. In fact, most of the time, if you do your homework, and if you're committed to that idea enough, money is not a big enough reason to stop you from being able to achieve your goal. Ignite from dreams to reality. Hmm, what do I like? I like what I do. I like going on holiday with my family. And I like my car. I like gadgets. And I like my bank. If your bank were us, you would like us too. Since 1894, we have built a strong and stable financial institution based on insightful local know-how, global reach, and a commitment to deliver to you world-class innovative solutions. First Bank, truly the first. Ignite from dreams to reality. Business simply means what you do an occupation that you engage to earn a living. Business to me is going around doing some things and in expectation of something in return. Business is uh, when someone ventures into something they, with the aim of making profit or earning a living. Business is the act of pro providing services and products for a fee. Business is a kind of uh, things where we possess, like at times you get things and then you sell to people to make profit on it. Business is all about exchange of services and goods. Business is an act of buying and selling, using money to, you know, make money. It's a medium of exchange. That's, what I, that's the way I see business. I provide you service, you provide me value. Ignite from dreams to reality. Thinking logically 
about what you want to do forces you to investigate all the pitfalls that are likely to happen in the course of the kind of business that you're thinking about. When you put pen to paper to document an idea, when you write it and you read it, you will see where there are gaps. And once you see those gaps, you begin to seek for information or solution to those gaps. As you think further about the process, you solve some of the likely problems that you're able to encounter. And the logical thinking helps you to sometimes to get to a full stop. The full stop means you, without even asking anybody, can see that this is not viable. Because, oh, it looks good, it looks good, it looks good, until it gets to this point. And then you realize it can't work. Let me give you an example. You know, in most other countries of the world, if you go to the Western countries especially, there's a business called valet parking. Let me explain what that means. It means that if I arrive at a hotel or at a function, I don't need to be looking for parking to park my car. There's a business with drivers waiting. I can toss my key to them. They give me a ticket. They will go and park my car for me. When I come back, I show them the ticket. They go and drive my car back to the entrance, and they give me my key. I pay. So now, does that sound like something that is viable in Nigeria? How many say yes? You know you're both right. And I'll tell you how. Yes, because you know we're party people in this country. We like to party. And for most places where the parties are held, parking is not really thought about. So we know that parking is a problem. So one of your biggest challenge when you get to a function is finding parking for your car. So you can spend a lot of time just trying to park your car or you worry about the safety of your car. Now, which means that if there's someone who is going to take the key from you whilst you go and enjoy yourself at the party, parks the car, guarantees that it's safe, and brings it back when you're ready to leave, how many people will be willing to pay for that kind of service? See, we all say yes. Because now we agree, yes, it's a good business for Nigeria. But let me now support the nose. This is how you think through your business idea. Because there are pluses and there are minuses for every business idea that you have. And once you force yourself to think logically through the process of writing the business plan, you will see whether the yeses outweigh the noes or whether you can find the answer to the noes or you can expand on the yeses enough to justify the business idea. So what is the problem why the no's will say no? Because we have a trust issue and security issue. Because for all I know, the driver for the valet parking company might just take my car and drive off. I know people that have hired drivers from the pages of newspapers. And the first time they send them on an errand with the car, that's the last time they see them with the car. So we have a trust problem. Not because the idea is not viable for our country, but because some of the bad values that we've allowed to come into our society is also working against us for business ideas that we can execute until a time when we increase the trust level in the society and the security is also improved. There are certain businesses that are good, that are viable, that will work in this country, but based on some of these other issues, we're not able to execute them. It requires logical thinking to put your business plan down. Those examples we've cited is to see what will happen as you begin to think and to document what your business idea is in a business plan. Now, a note of caution. The best business plan written by the best consulting firm in the world is a bundle of assumption. Because how many science graduates are here? Okay, my first degree is in chemistry as well. So I know that once we're in the lab, 
is an experiment. We will try this and try this and try this, and at the end of the day, you write a conclusion and you put, but all your assumptions will be stated. You have, as, at the beginning, you assume this, 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 this. Then you're going to try to prove your theory before you get to your conclusion. Your business plan is a bundle of your assumptions. You're going to assume so many things, that this will be there, this will be there, this will happen, this will not. No problem with those assumptions. But you've got to work those assumptions to the best of your ability to check that those assumptions are right to a large extent. And that is why for you to be a business person, you must have a level of flexibility as a person and in your thinking. Because as you begin to, to test out your business plan in execution, you will encounter some issues that will require you fine-tuning your assumptions or your original plan and making changes along the way towards your goal. So in order to put a business plan together, you require logical thinking. Now, you must also be able to link your original vision to the acquisition of the materials that you need for it. When you write the business plan, you will have to list all your requirements. And in listing your requirements, you will see if you have underestimated the project or you have overestimated it. Because in underestimating, you can think, oh, I need this, I need, that's all I need. But as you begin to write, you require, you realize, ah, if we need this, then I must have this as well for this to work. I need a generator. Oh, if I need a generator, I need what? A diesel tank. And if I need a diesel tank, this one leads to this. If I'm going to use NEPA at some time, I've got to provide for what? Either UPS or a stabilizer. Just some things you can miss out that can become a problem for you later. And you also determine, the, as you determine the machinery, you're able to then determine that maybe you thought one plot of land will be enough for what you want to do. Or, oh, my mother's small shop where she used to uh, sell before, I can start there. But then you realize that the smallest machine you need for the business that you want to execute requires three times the size of the space of your mother's shop. So that makes that location unviable. And you've now got to think of a solution in terms of space. Now, those are some of the things that you'll have to think about. But beyond that, for entrepreneurial success as an individual, you need to start by thinking about value-adding opportunities. Because what you're going to write the plan about in itself, you must have a sense or an idea of what it is. Now, some of those things you already live in. You live in the midst of your opportunity. You have the opportunities all around you. Some of you are already working it and you don't know. Some of you grew up with it, but you haven't explored it. Because for some of you, your degree has created a wedge between you and the opportunity. You think, oh, I'm a graduate. This one is not for me. Let me tell you the story of a young man. And I hope he's watching. His family lives in Oshogbo. His father is a tailor. He's always, you know, made uh, Agbada and all of that with serious jacon. You know what jacon is? The embroidery that they do on the Agbadas and all of that. And through the tailoring business in Oshobo, the man paid for his son to go through University of Lagos and he studied economics. When he finished his economics degree and he went to serve, he was trying to do some small business amongst uh, his friends. When they came back from youth service, he realized he hadn't found a job. So he thought about what to do. He realized that a number of his friends that they came back from youth service together will need to buy shirts to wear for their first jobs to start. And he thought, oh, the first thing you think about was tailoring, making shirts, because he grew up in that environment. So for some of you, some, the environment in which you have grown up would have influenced you one way or the other. And don't discard it. Sometimes you need to explore it. But you need to explore it for new opportunities and new ways of doing things. So this young man made some shirts, you know, went, got a tailor, made some shirts and all of that, and tried to sell to his friends. 
And his friend said, oh, it's nice and all that. Oh, but the color is not very good. You didn't get the cough. How many people know that a shirt, the most difficult part is the color and the cough? Down the street in the area where he used to live, there was a tailor there who was making shirts and making them well. So he went to this guy, without remembering that he's a graduate of economics or the arrogance of being a graduate, he went to him and said, can I serve under you as a learner? What do they call them? Apprentices. Uh, most of you think he's uh, school leavers that go and be apprentices. Abby? Anyway. So he went there to say, can I serve under you as an apprentice? And the guy said, no problem. Don't pay me. I'll come. So the guy started going there every day so he could learn how the shirts were made properly. Eventually, he left and went to start making the shirts and making other kinds of clothes that he was selling to his friends. The guy is still in fashion business for guys, but this is all part of wanting to be a business person and all the things you need to consider. Some of your opportunities are all around you. Ignite from dreams to reality. What do I like? I like what I do. I like going on holiday with my family. And I like my car. I like gadgets. And I like my bank. If your bank were us, you would like us too. Since 1894, we have built a strong and stable financial institution based on insightful local know-how, global reach, and a commitment to deliver to you world-class innovative solutions. First Bank, truly the first. Ignite from dreams to reality. Being self-employed gives you the time, the, the opportunity and the time to make decisions, to be the head, to direct, channel all your energy into your own business. You'll be able to venture into various businesses, you do various projects and still have time for yourself and control of your time. If you want to be on your own, you have to be more willing to, read, to listen to the advices of people that are ahead in the business, ahead of you. You must have a strategic plan, you must think of the future how to expand the necessary instruments you need to be able to succeed in the business you are going into. If you do not plan well, well, of course, it means you have planned to fail. Ignite from dreams to reality. There are certain things, conditions that are essential for entrepreneurial success. And in terms of yourself, you've got to consider these things. You have to Make your life unencumbered in a way. Free yourself for the adventure of being an entrepreneur. You wouldn't know all the answers. Do you understand? So you will never have a perfect business plan. Remember that. You will not, your business idea in itself will not be perfect, but you will be diligent in working the process of it. You need to be focused and be willing to be one track minded for a period and a season. You're not going to say, I want to do this, I want to do this. Mm -mm. A man that wants to chase many things at the same time will, at the end of the day, be a man that will catch none. So you have to stay focused because there are times people ask me, you mean you're still in this furniture business? I always, I look at them strange because I'm asking myself, okay, so 
I'm supposed to have done what? I remember one day I asked how many people had been in businesses over time. I got a lot of hands. And then there was a gentleman. I asked him, I said, how long have you been in business? He said, 10 years. So I said, eh, how many businesses have you done in 10 years? He said, eight. Oh, you're laughing. Because a lot of people get their ideas from somebody else's idea. Recharge card is popular now. And my neighbor has just bought land from selling recharge card. That's where I'm going. Who says that's your own calling? Have you even investigated if it's really recharge card that your neighbor used to buy the land? Do you understand what I'm saying? So when someone's done eight businesses in 10 years, is what? Um, jack of all trade, master of none. Now, compare him to a focused, one-track-minded person who in 10 years has stayed with one business. What do you think would have happened? He would have mastered that area of business. He would have discovered some niche, some specialty. He would have developed some, special, some specialties. He would have learned some new things that some people might not have learned. He would have solved some of the problems within that business and that industry. He would have known how to maximize his, profi his profit and solve and reduce his cost in that business. And he would have built a customer base over time that has come to trust and to rely on him for the business that he does. Between the guy who is only doing it for one year and the guy who has done it well for 10 years, who will I choose? The guy who has done it well for 10 years. And, you know, once you stay focused in one business and you prove yourself in that business, it becomes very easy to have the second, the third, and the fourth. Even when you think about, like, you're going to a bank to look for money, they want track record. They want performance record. If you've done one business for five years or for 10 years, you can show track record over a period of five years of being stable, being reliable, being trustworthy, of achieving some results in what you're doing then. So you have to discipline yourself to stay focused and walk through. Most people give up at the first challenge that they come, they encounter. But challenges are part of life. You will encounter challenges anywhere. And that's why someone can do eight businesses in 10 years. Because every time he got, he hit a wall, he ran away. If you're going to be successful as an entrepreneur, you have to have the doggedness of spirit to stay and fight for what you believe. And that's the reason why you must never go into any business except you're passionate about it. It must be something that you've discovered that you love. It must be something you're willing to do even if nobody pays you for it. It must be something that makes sense to you. It must be something you're willing to fight for. Which means when you encounter the problem, your whole being goes into finding a solution to that problem. And it is finding the solution to the problem that separates you from the rest of your competition. Because the average person will run away. And every time somebody runs away because of a problem, what does it present for you? Go, ah, uh ah, -uh, smart Nigerians, clap for yourself. That is the truth. Every time some people encounter a problem in the same business sector and they run away, they have just opened up an opportunity for you. Why? Whatever part of the market that they were controlling before became available to you. And if you have encountered a problem, that problem is common to all. Most other people will encounter the problem. The guy who waits long enough to solve the problem is the one that will rule the market. It's the one that will eventually control the market. And rule solve the problem legally. Please, take note. Solve the problem legally. This is very important because there are many solutions for everything illegally. But you must always remember, if you want any business to succeed on the long term and be sustainable, you must work within the law and you must work within the right ethics and the right values. Because if you don't, one day 
there will be a day of reckoning. And everything you think you've built will fall apart. So you must always seek for solution that is right, that is within the law, that is honorable, that you can stand and be proud to say, this is what I've done. In 2004, when the government of Nigeria banned importation of furniture, I'd been in furniture business for how many years? We were producing components in different parts of the world, bringing them into Nigeria and coupling them together for our line. We had started with full local manufacturing. But at a certain stage, our desire and our quest to deliver international standard quality in Nigeria, I started looking for places where I could produce the parts and get consistent quality without power or any of those challenges that were common. But when government changed the law, in part of our line became illegal to bring in that way. I still wanted to remain in the business because I knew that that was the business that God had called me to. And I knew that he had allowed me to be successful in it for a reason. But I also know that I will not honor my God according to my faith by deciding at that point to become a smuggler. It was an option that was available and an option that many people took. But it was not an option I was willing to consider as a solution to a problem that I encountered at that point. A problem that threatened to shut down my entire business that I built for over 15 years or so at that point. I decided that within the context of that market, the best thing to do was if I could have the first mover's advantage to find a way to deliver the same international quality in the local market. Tough, rough, most people did not expect that it would work. Even I was worried that my French, the French guys who produce office seating for us will never want to come to Nigeria. They sell all over the world, but coming to Nigeria was not going to be their first choice for going abroad to set up. But you must have faith and know who you are. I believed in my God. I also believe in my country. So I had the courage and the boldness. Remember I told you, you must be courageous, you must be bold. You must know who you are, and if you've done your own work, you will stand and you'll face anybody, even if he's the president of America. And as I sat across the table from these people, and they were like, invest in Nigeria, they chuckled. I kept a straight face. And I said to them, you come to Nigeria with me, and we do this together, and we will control the West African market. Or you don't, and I will do it without you anyway, and you will lose my portion of your business. Because as at that moment, we were in their top 10 dealership in the world. So I knew that we created value for them. And I said, I don't never apologize for my country. Oh, we have problems, but I'm not ashamed to be a Nigerian. And I will never apologize for being a Nigerian. And at that point, the government had said that the reason they were doing this was to create jobs for Nigerians, legitimate reason. And so I wanted to commit to that process. Eventually, they agreed. They came. That factory, is, that particular factory has been running for seven years. Against their expectation, they, they didn't expect us to make profit for five years. We started paying dividend from the second year. And I told them, I know my country, I know my market, and I know that if you come with me, you will never regret it. And they haven't regretted it. So what I'm saying to you is, problems will come, but you've got to be focused, and you've got to be confident, you've got to be courageous, as an entrepreneur. You've got to be able to encourage yourself. So as someone that wants to go into business, you need to find a group of people that share your kind of vision and passion. People that will be encouragers to you, not people that will discourage you. People that can help you to stand when the rough and the tough times come in business, because they will come. It's part of life. Don't, you don't run away, but some will. And every time they do, they open a door for you. The question is, who will be standing to take advantage of the market? Ignite from dreams to reality. Hmm, what do I like? I like what I do. 
I like going on holiday with my family. And I like my car. I like gadgets. And I like my bank. If your bank were us, you would like us too. Since 1894, we have built a strong and stable financial institution based on insightful local know-how, global reach, and a commitment to deliver to you world-class innovative solutions. First Bank, truly the first. Ignite from dreams to reality. You can see from um, the number of batches we have per year for youth service that universities in Nigeria are always churning out quite a large number of graduates. And there are just a few markets for these people. So what I would say is um, everyone who studies in this school should try to make sure he knows what he's studying as he know it in the skill and the services he can provide with it. With that, that person can go, even if you have to be employed, you can provide services and add value to the people you are serving. Then if you have to create a service, as in you have to be a business owner, then you can still do very well while providing your services. When I finished my school, I suit up as a new graduate, going from one company to another company, reading a um, newspaper, looking for a job. But at the end of the day, they won't call you. And it was stressful, you know, going from company to another company, begging, despite what you read in school and everything. So I believe since I have the skill of marketing and sales, let me sit for it. Ignite from dreams to reality. One of the best ways I check a business idea that is running through my mind, I start talking about it. Now, I know a lot of you have this idea that you should hide your business ideas under your armpits because you don't want somebody to steal it. Guess what? There's nothing new under the sky. There's no idea that you have thought of that nobody else has not thought of. That's the bottom line. It is not the idea that is the problem. It is the guy who works the idea to execution and profitability. That is the difference. Ideas, you know how your Bible says, idea is soon. What does that mean? Idea is boku, plenty of ideas. But ideas are ten a penny. Ideas themselves, they're nothing. That's why this project Ignite from dreams to reality. An entrepreneur is not a dreamer, he's a doer. You know, within all the dreams and the ideas you have, they're not all viable. You've got to learn to sort through them and find the one that works. And even some of them that are viable are not viable at that time, in that season, in your location. Do you understand what I'm saying? So you've got to sort through your many ideas. Don't, you know, excite yourself. I have so many ideas, I just haven't been able. No, 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 no. You have to be open-minded enough to share your ideas. Why? I'm a Christian, so sometimes if I refer to the Bible, you must understand where my knowledge base is. The Bible says, in the multitude of counsel, there is safety. Why? When I'm gisting with my friend, I say, and I'm thinking about doing it, she says, yeah, that's good, but you know that somebody is doing that somewhere. That's information. Because now you know it's not new, there's already competition. So you want to find out what the competition is doing? What are the problems they're encountering? Are they being successful or not? If they are, find out why. If not, find out why. Or somebody will say to you, ah, but have you thought about doing it this way? Then you say, ah, it's true, I didn't think about that. There's no one person that is a, an island of knowledge. As you share with people around you, you get those that will help you to build up your ideas. You get some encouragement. You could also even find some people who have ideas with which you can synergize. And working those ideas together can become a stronger, more viable business than you alone trying to do what you're talking about. Do you understand what I'm saying? You've got to be open-minded and you must be confident. Because you see, if you're self-confident, you're not worried about the next person if he's going to take your business. Nobody can take your business. I guarantee you that. All my business life, I talk about my business ideas. I share, I explore, I listen, I take from what you are saying, 
Everything you say that I add to what I know before is added knowledge. The next time I'm talking about it, you think I know more than I knew the last time. Because now, I'm, I know more just by talking about it around you. It's free consultancy. And if you want to go and copy it, you can only copy the portion of it that I've discussed. You don't know the depth or the foundation of the idea. You don't know what triggered it, and you don't have my constitution. Each person has a constitution that makes them more viable for an, with an idea. Do you understand what I'm saying? So never be afraid of that. Have the sense of liberty and adventure to pursue what you think. As an entrepreneur, you need to be open-minded and be ready for the adventure. Because believe me, part of what keeps me get, uh, excited and awake each morning is because my life isn't boring. It's a different thing every day. I'm most excited when we're working on a new project in my company. I'm the new project person. That's all I do. Because everybody knows I will not be able to sleep. I'm dreaming and thinking of that idea. We should do this. We should do this. I hold on to the new ideas until we birth them. I would keep drawing in the people that are necessary to help bring it alive and expand the knowledge base until we execute. Once we execute and it becomes a process, I lose interest. Most entrepreneurs are restless like me. So don't be worried if you think, I'm all, or your parents think you're all over the place. Go and ask my parents. My father told me once that at one stage in my life, in the early years of my business, he said, ah, Mobi, you know. <laughs> like he was waiting for the day that maybe I would get into trouble and he would have to sell a house or something and pay just because he knew that I was bold, I was adventurous, and sometimes I was ready to take risks. As an entrepreneur, you must have an element of risk-taking in you. Ignite from dreams to reality. Thank you for watching Ignite TV. Next week, we will delve deeper into what starting a business is all about. Until then, ignite and keep your entrepreneurial fire burning. Send in your comments, questions, and shout outs to our Facebook page, facebook.com slash ignite.tv, Twitter at ignite TV NG. And check out our website, www.ignite-tv.com. For extras on Ignite, visit our YouTube account on www.youtube.com slash Ignite TV Nigeria. For lots more about the show and lots of useful information on building your business. <laughs>